All right, so one of the frequently asked questions we get about spine specialist robotic laser enhanced spinal decompression is what are the success rates? So there's a quick answer to that and there is an actual explanation of what that actually means. So the quick answer first is that if we have 10 patients come in, we normally have less than one that doesn't get a result that they're happy with. So to say the results are probably 90% plus is fairly accurate. And there, there are some reasons for that. Um, the device is very versatile. There are a lot of different things you can do with it in comparison to other decompression devices. So um, other decompression devices offer maybe rope angle. You can change the height of the table to change where you're kind of pulling so they mark it. Now, we can change a number of different things. We can change programming on the laser. We can change direction of pull. We can change angle of pull. We can change where we pull from. So one of the things you may have seen is hip decompression. Hip decompression is also the type of setup that we use with it is very good for lateral disc herniations. So for people who have had, you know, radiculopathy down one side, right leg, for example, we can actually pull on that right leg, focusing the energy from the pull on the right side where the disc is likely compressed more than on the other side, which is why often they're getting that pain down that side. Now, it's not always the case, but this is just one example. Then we can also focus the laser in that area to help reduce the inflammation, to help increase the relaxation of the muscle to reduce pain to get rid of spasm so that stretch occurs much more comfortably much more completely much more effectively so now why success rates are a difficult thing to hang your hat on it's real easy as an equipment company to say our results are 98 percent well i can create that number i can take a whole bunch of results that I can tabulate. and I can create that number. And in the past, unfortunately, there are some companies who have done that very thing and have found out later that, you know, that isn't so much the case. Because once you get the device and if your results are not 98%, well, then why is that? Maybe you're not using it properly. Maybe you need to learn more about how to do it. Maybe you're not diagnosing properly. Maybe and the diagnosis part is important because you want to make sure the person is definitely the right candidate for what it is that you're offering. So those things all affect the success rates. If you don't select the right patient for the treatment, I can select the right patient for the treatment and get almost 100% success. But then how do we define that success? Is it complete resolution? Is it complete resolution proven by MRI? Is it loss? of pain and improvement of function is a success considered that patient can now do the things that they want to do without being limited by pain maybe they still get relapses every once in a while but they don't have pain so if you tabulate that success by patients getting back to function with minimal pain levels then if you apply the right treatment to the right patient, almost every patient gets some relief out of it and a relief that they're happy with. Now, are there cases that you know are not treatable through this type of therapy? Absolutely. Um, I mean, somebody who's completely blown a disc and has you know cauda equina, things like that, that are more of an emergency case. Of course, you know, if you take 50 of those cases and 50 proper cases, your results are going to be under 50% because you haven't selected the right patient for that care. So that's part of what we train into people as well, is to make sure that you're selecting the right type of patient for care. Um, now that being said, we still take a lot of patients that have conditions that would that normal chiropractors would not ever touch because they'd be maybe afraid or they think they can't get the results that they need to get so they don't even want to bother trying. Um, I want to bother trying on almost everybody as long as there isn't a massive red flag to worry about. Um, so basically to answer that question about success rates, there are a lot of things you can do to create a false success rate. Um, 
but we're not going to be one of those companies. We're never going to be one of those companies that creates a false success rate to sell a device because that's just not honest. And when you're not honest and when you're not upfront and when you're not realistic about what it is that you do and what it is you provide to doctors so they can provide it to their patients, the patients are the ones that lose. And as a company, our number one driving force was always to make sure that your patients get the best, get the most effective treatment for what it is they're suffering from. And in this position, when we've created what amounts to a new type of therapy for patients, it gives them new hope. So to come out and quote a success rate um, that you know you could really pull out from anywhere realistically, because if you think about that, it's the absolute truth. You can quote anything you want. You can, you know, take only the X-ray or MRI results that you proved uh, to be positive and proved to illustrate your point. This is done in research all the time. We know that. Um, we're not going to do that because that means that we become peddlers of false hope, and that's not good for anybody. So, what we can say with a hundred percent certainty unequivocally we provide the most unique and most uniquely technologically advanced form of therapy that exists for spine for hips and for knees with the spine specialist system i designed it for myself to be able to get better results with the people that weren't getting results with the other stuff I had access to. So that amounts to laser therapy alone, spinal decompression alone, uh, regular chiropractic alone. I wanted to have a tool that could get to the patients that I couldn't get to with all the other stuff I had. And combining it, well, we know that laser has a great body of research behind it. We know that spinal decompression has a great body of research behind it. And those two things have been proven to work phenomenally well with a great number of patients. So when we combine them together, it stands to reason that, you know, maybe they'll work a little better. Maybe one will help the other because if both are effective, the two if the two done together, well, it's it doesn't seem logical that they'd work less effectively. It only seems logical that they might work more effectively. They definitely work more efficiently. They definitely soften and relax the tissue at the same time as you're stretching it. Physically, mechanically, realistically, that all makes sense. And that's really what we're trying to do. Offer something that makes sense to the doctor. Offer something that makes sense to the patient so you can help your patients better. That helps your business. That helps your reputation. And to hang a number on a success rate even though I can say that from my own clinical practice over the last, you know, 15 years of doing decompression or the last 10 years of doing robotic laser decompression, because I did have this device a long time in my own office before I ever uh, brought it out to other doctors. Um, I can say that rarely is a patient that we get that we can't make some difference with. And to most of the patients that you treat that have tried everything else, even a little bit of difference would be considered a success to them. And I'm reasonably certain that you feel the same way. So thanks very much for watching. I hope that gives a little bit of background on success rates and you know how we feel as a company about providing honest, effective, and logical therapy to the patients and how that can affect your life, the patient's life, and the lives of those they love. Thanks so much for watching and uh, thank you for the question.